Good morning guys, my name's Connor. I'm the host of this YouTube channel, Hot Heads Media. Gonna go over the weekly news, hot topics, artist spotlight and Q&A again today. So I received the first, um, well I received an issue of Modern Barber last week so I'm gonna get into it now. Uh, let's get that open, my trusty uh, letter opener shall we say. Let's get into it. It's not as sharp as it once was actually. Probably needs to get that sharpened. So this is the new issue. Hope you've got yours. So in this we've got this is your scan here for free tickets. So obviously that's for Barber Connect. If you do um, sign up to Modern Barber, you get little perks like that. And this is the new issue of Modern Barber. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm sure you've all probably seen the front cover already. It's the statement team on it. Uh, my mate Wes Jones is on it. So congratulations to you guys. I'm going to get into that a bit later on. And I'm going to have a little sit through and have a read. So well done to them guys getting on the cover. They're going to be at Barber Connect. and Go, go see Wes. He's going to be at Barber Connect as well um, over the Sunday and the Monday. So I'm going to show you who else is going to be appearing on that stage as well. He's appearing actually on the Andy stage. So let's go over who else is going to be appearing on that. So we're excited to announce on our Andy stage the lineup at Barber Connect. Join us for an unforgettable experience over the Sunday and Monday packed with master classes, competitions and live demonstrations led by Andis educators. Perfect for all barbers looking to take their professional journey to the next level. So on the Andis stage, you're going to have Hayden Cassidy, Gerard Lin Liddington, Lindy Rolfe, Sid Sotong, Baldy, Wes Jones, Kevin Vorley and Angie Perino is going to be the host for that. So that should be really good as well. So... Yeah, if you are going Barber Connect, go and see, go and see them guys on the Andy stage. So next bit of news, Mike Taylor, um, the new resource book is coming out, number three. So I've got one and two, and they're honestly amazing. Every salon barber shop should have one of these, even if it's to help teach your staff or to go over when you need a few things, uh, or you need to be reminded of a few tips and tricks of the industry. The resource book is great. Now they're super, uh, super excited to release the latest edition of the Barber and Resource book, launching at Generation Barber on the 20th of May, 2024. If you'll be there, or be the first to grab your copy of this must have book. So if you don't go, you can keep your eyes peeled for information about how to pre-order your co copy to be sent out on the 21st of May. So if you don't know what Generation Barber is, I'm gonna get into that now. If you don't go, then make sure you get your copy ordered. So Generation Barber is the first ever barbering show for barbering students. Generation Barber brings you some of Britain's best barbering educators and platform artists. So if you head on to their, uh, this link here, this is the Eventbrite link. This is the Eventbrite link. You can go, actually one sec, let me just do something while I'm here. There we go, that's a little bit better now. Right, so, are we back to transition? Yeah, so. There you go, right, sorry, we're back. So that is Generation Barber now. And you can head here and get your event tickets from Eventbrite. And you've got educators uh, such as Baldy, Wes, they're all gonna be at the competition. Um, so yeah, it's a, student, it's a student barber show. Sounds really good. Um, I'm not sure when the date is, but I can look into that for you on the next up and coming ones. But yeah, it looks great. So fair play to you guys. And like I say, you can get your order there of the Mike Taylor education book. And if you don't, make sure you get on a pre-order. So moving on, the hot topic, we're gonna to move on to the hot topic now. And the hot topic of the week is, it's Stress Awareness Month. Now, 
Uh, we at Hothead Media put out some tips and tricks last week of what we believe is some good ideas to help you tackle stress. But April is the stress awareness month, so I'm sure you'll see it around in a few different ideas. So we're going to share some stuff with you today. Make sure you try and keep yourself stress free. I know it is a bit of a stressful month, April. What is it, the fourth month and, you know, it's tax month, everything like that. You know, you're just getting started off with the with the year and stuff, really. I feel like I haven't even really had a kick in yet into the year. You know, I feel like we're sort of still around that Christmas period. And with the weather being the way it is, you know, I just I want to start seeing, you know, hopefully April will give us a bit of a boost. Hopefully we'll start seeing some new uh, some good weather and stuff like that. So we're going to show you some tips and tricks to help you feel less stressed and hopefully they help. So let's get into that now. So this is on our Hotheads Media page. If you haven't seen, we just dropped a new uh, video on barber chairs and the history of barber chairs also. So go and check that new video out. But you can head over to our Instagram and... Our Instagram is where you'll find these tips and tricks for dealing with stress. So, understanding stress. Are you stressed out? Let's dive deeper into understanding stress. It's our body's response to threats or pressure, triggering adrenaline. But prolonged stress can wreak havoc on our well-being and relationships. What causes it? Stresses vary. What overwhelms one person might not phase another. It often occurs when we feel ill-equipped to handle life's challenges. So we're going to go through the pro tips now, and these are tips that I've put together myself, along with my uh, editor and videographer. He helps me put it all together, and I get the stuff wrote down. So what is it? Our body's response to threats and pressure, triggering adrenaline, but prolonged stress can wreak havoc on our well-being and our relationships. Stresses vary. What causes it? Sorry. Stresses vary. What overwhelms one person might not phase another. It often occurs when we feel ill-equipped to handle life changes. So top tips for relief. Chunk it down. Break tasks into manageable pieces, celebrating each... Each... Is that the right word? Each... Compl Sorry, I'm struggling here with this. Break down tasks into each manageable pieces, celebrating each completion. Sorry, don't know why I found that so difficult to read. I wrote it. Break tasks into manageable pieces, celebrating each completion. Perfect. Sounds about right. Hit the Sweat it out. Hit the gym or get moving to release tension and boost those feel-good endorphins. Talk it out. Share your feelings with trusted friends or professionals. Remember, a problem shared is a problem halved. Find your zen. Explore stress reduction techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT or meditation to find your calm amidst the chaos. So there are top tips for dealing with stress in April. So this is what I found on the this is mentalhealth.org and they this is a summary like what is stress, what makes us stressed, what are the signs of stress, who is affected by stress, how can it how can you help yourself, get professional help. So it dives a little bit deeper into what we've just gone over. So I'm going to read you a few points here and we'll go through onto this. So like I say, this is from mentalhealth.org. You can just type it in and find out and find this uh, page yourself. So let's go into it then. So what is stress? Stress is our response to pressure. Many different situations or life events can cause stress. It is often triggered when we experience something new or unexpected that threatens our sense of self or when we feel we have little control over the situation. We deal with stress differently. Our ability to cope can depend on our genetics. Early life events, personality and social and eco economic circumstances. When we encounter stress, our body produces stress hormones that trigger a fight or flight response and activate our immune system. This helps us respond quickly to dangerous situations. Sometimes this stress response can be helpful. It can help push us through fear or pain so we can run a marathon or deliver a speech. For example, our stress hormones usually return to normal quickly once the stressful event is over and there won't be any lasting effects. 
However, too much stress can cause adverse effects. It can leave us in a permanent stage of fight or flight, leaving us overwhelmed or unable to cope. Long term, this can affect our physical and mental health. So that's a deeper explanation of what is stress. So what makes us stressed? Many things can lead to stress. Bereavement, divorce, separation. Losing a job or unexpected money problems. That's, I think, a cause of a lot of people's stress at the moment. Work-related stress can also have a negative impact on your mental health. People affected by work-related stress lose an average of 24 days due to work due to ill health. Even positive life changes such as moving to a bigger house, gaining a job promotion or going on holiday can be resources of stress. If you feel stressed in these situations, you may struggle to understand why or be unwilling to share your feelings with others. What are the signs of stress? So how you might feel. So here are some signs of stress. If you're anxious, afraid, angry or aggressive, sad, irritable, frustrated, depressed. These feelings can sometimes produce physical symptoms, making you feel even worse. Now, I just want to say I get stressed a lot. So if you do feel stressed, you're not on your own. It's, it's tough, like going through life, running a business, doing everything, trying to keep your head above water. So I get it. I really do. How your body might react. You might have headaches, nausea, indigestion, digestive problems such as constipation, bloating or diarrhea, shallow breathing or hyperventilating, sweating, heart palpitations, aches and pains. How might you behave? Withdraw from other people or snap at them. Be indecisive or inflexible. Be tearful. Have problems getting to sleep or staying asleep. Experience sexual problems. Smoke, drink alcohol or take drugs more than usual. If the stress is long lasting, you may notice your sleep and memory are affected. Your eating habits change or you feel inclined to exercise. Some research has also linked long-term stress to gastrointestinal conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, or stomach ulcers and conditions like cardiovascular disease. Who is affected by stress? All of us can probably recognise some of the feelings described above. Some people seem to be more affected by stress than others. For some people, getting out of the door on time each morning can be a very stressful experience whereas others may feel less affected by a great deal of pressure. Some people are more likely to experience stressful situations than others. For example, people with a lot of debt, financial insecurity are more likely to be stressed out about money. That's a big topic in the UK. People from minority ethnic groups who are LGBTQ. B T Q I A are more likely to be stressed out about prejudice or discrimination. People with disabilities or long-term health conditions are more likely to be stressed out, stressed about their health or stigma associated with them. How can you help yourself? If you're feeling stressed, there are some things you can try to feel less tense or overwhelmed. Recognize stress is a problem. Connecting the physical and emotional signs you're experiencing to pressures you face is important. Don't ignore physical warning signs such as tense muscles, tiredness, headaches or migraines. Think about what causes your stress. Sort them into issues with practical solutions. Things that will get better with time you can't do anything about. Take control of the small steps and the things you can improve. Make plans to address the things that you can. This might involve setting yourself realistic expectations and prioritising essential commitments. If you feel overwhelmed, ask for help. Say no to things you can't take on. Think about where you can make changes. Are you taking on too much? Could you hand over some things to someone else? Can you do things more in a leisurely way? You need to prioritise things or reorganise your life so you're not trying to do everything at once. That's something I really try and do. I try and do everything all at once, always. Right. Build supportive relationships. Thankfully, I've got a lot of support network around me, so this really, really helps me when I get stressed. 
Find close family or friends who can offer help or practical advice that can support you in managing stress. Joining a club or a course can help you expand your social network and encourage you to do something different. Activities like volunteering can change your perspective and have a beneficial impact on your mood. Eat healthy. A healthy diet can improve your mood. Getting enough nutrients, including essential vitamins and minerals and water, can help your mental well-being. That is one thing I can't state highly enough. If you're eating bad foods, you are going to feel bad. You need to get your diet on point. And after the last few years of going through COVID and stuff, I do believe a lot of people are on a bit of a health kick. But make sure the food, you're not just hitting the gym. Make sure the food you're putting in your body is good too because it's only going to make you feel worse if you're putting bad things in. Get some exercise. Physical exercise can help manage the effects of stress by producing endorphins that boost your mood. It can be hard to motivate yourself if you're stressed, but even a little bit of activity can make a difference. For example, you could aim to walk 15 to 20 minutes three times a week. Getting exercise is not about going to the gym and really smashing out as many weights as you can all at once. It's always about consistency when hitting the gym. You'll see big gains over a long period of time, but it doesn't come with just going to the gym every now and again you have to stay consistent and if that just means getting started off by 15 minutes walking each day do it whatever's going to get the body the the body warm and the blood pumping it's going to be good for you it releases them endorphins that make you feel positive take time out take time to relax and practice self-care where you do positive things for yourself striking a balance between responsibility to others and responsibility to yourself is vital in reducing stress levels be mindful mindfulness meditation can can be practiced anywhere at any time research has suggested it's helpful for managing and reducing effect of stress and anxiety get some restful sleep if you're having difficulty sleepy, sleeping, you can reduce the amount of caffeine you consume to avoid too much screen time before bed and avoid too much screen time before bed. Write down a to-do list for the next day to help you prioritise. Make sure you put it aside before bed. There's a guide here you can click on if you read this article for more tips on getting a good night's sleep. Be kind to yourself. Try to keep things in perspective and don't be too hard on yourself. Look for positive things in your life and write down the things that make you feel grateful. So this is just a thing about getting professional help. So you can, be, if you feel overwhelmed by stress, you can seek professional help. Talk to your doctor. Ask them on what treatment that may help you or if there's any treatment they advise. So CBT can help reduce cognitive behavioural therapy, can help reduce stress by changing the way you think about stressful situations. And counselling can give you the chance to talk about what stress and what stress you is what's causing you stress and um, coping strategies. So if your stress is work related, our page Work Life Balance is where you'll click on, may help you. If you feel comfortable to talk to a manager on a HR team, if it's work you're stressed out about, do it. They can change your workload or hours. You can contact your workplace for confidential support and counselling if your workspace has an employee assistance scheme. So that is everything I've got on Stress Awareness Month and stuff and um, the information regard, uh, regarded around that. Now, make sure you're definitely looking after yourself, guys. There's nothing worse than being overwhelmed with stress. It is a really debilitating thing. I've been through it many times myself and I still go through it and I probably will do in the future. But I'm taking, uh, I'm taking a firm grasp of my life trying to reduce the stresses I do have within my, within my life. You know, I'm trying to delegate jobs. I'm trying to look at things slightly differently. Um, but I know it is stressful at times. So keep your head up, guys. Keep on pushing forward and... Obviously, if you do find this information helpful, please let me know. We do the hard work so you don't have to. It is Stress Awareness Month. Listening to, if you can put this on and just listen to the things that benefit you within, even listening to this this um, this 
it's not even a podcast, this video is going to be beneficial for you because you can go and do things while you're putting this on. And this is the idea of what we're doing here at Hotheads Media. You can get all this information and tips and tricks on how to do it without having to go and do the hard work yourself. And you can just put it on in the background. And the subconscious mind takes in a lot. I don't think you really realize it. So that's what we're trying to do here. But like I say, if you do like this information and you found it useful, please drop me a message. Please let me know and try to stay less stressed. If there's anything else I can help you with along this area, maybe tips and tricks that I use, head over to the Hotheads Media Instagram, find them. And, you know, I'm always here if you want to have a quiet word or drop me a message or anything like that because I do deal with it myself. So, okay, um, moving on then, guys. So we're going to move on to the artist spotlight. So the first one in my artist spotlight this week is going to be Montel Fade. So there was an image that I seen. Uh, where was it? So I think it was this top one, actually. Um, so yeah, this one by Montel Fade. So Montel Campbell, an award-winning artist, Barbara Icon, gents hair, I think that's how you say it. So you can book via Nearcut and near cut so they're on near cut they are this is the image that drew me to it what or not you know it's a nice image so i've seen this on the gram to not only have cut this man's hair from the beginning but to have known him since the street dancing days so he used to be a street dancer that's pretty cool we've got a new lad coming into our shop who does a bit of street dancing it seems to kind of go a bit hand in hand um at the moment got a lot of homies out there i've known since before i remember to have them in my life and in my chair is truly a blessing Oh, that's amazing. That makes his haircut even better, um, you know, if he knows this guy personally. But, you know, this is a great uh, trim, so go run up his page. And he does some great work as well. So that's Montal underscore Fades. So the next one in my artist spotlight this week is James Massa. So Massa is a talented barber. You know, he does a lot of uh, concept capture and create, as is in his bio. He works at the Shed Barber Shop, an alternative barbering co. He's an ambassador for the Lions Barber Collective. He's great at haircutting, videography, um, what else does he do? Photography and stuff like that. He puts together um, photo shoots and stuff through the year, so hit him up for some of the stuff. I'm just going to go through a few of the videos he's got now because some of them are actually done in our shop, which is really cool. actually videoed in Coventry which is really cool you know he came down to the shop with a few of the team he brings with him and we did some great content we did some great haircuts Coventry is a really like gritty city so there's great places to um, get some shots and stuff like this sick always love working with Massa so that's why I wanted to give him a shout out it's Massa.uk go run up his page so next in the artist spotlight is Robert Braid. Now, I don't think he really needs any introduction. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this new Clipper brand that he is um, like a, he's the new artistic director for, I believe. Oh, no, it says it there. Yeah. So Robert Braid, the one that got me to this is this image here, which I think is absolutely incredible. Shot by uh, Leo Mokes as well. So I just think this is really good. Robert Braid doesn't really need the shout out. We are trying to work on people with less of a following and stuff. He's already got 43,000, but I just love this image. You know, great model, great shot by Liam. You know, it's a black and white image. I always do love a black and white image and it's cut by Robert Braid. So this is all the people who were on that uh, team. They did a hair color and stuff on it, but, you know, and he is the new ambassador for a new... Um, Clipper brand, which will be hitting the market this year. So that's really interesting. So I just wanted to give him a shout out as well. And both James and Massa are both Milton Keynes-ish sort of base. So a lot of talent coming out of there as well. So yeah, that's it, that's it guys for today for the um, Artist Spotlight and Industry Watch and the Hot Topics. So we're going to go on to the Q&A now.
I've just got to lean over a little bit because when I came in this morning, I was charging my iPad, but it actually didn't charge overnight. So um, it was a bit of a nightmare. So first off, what do you think about the minimum wage going up? It's getting harder and harder to pay my staff and I'm scared about putting my prices up. Yeah, it's difficult. There's not really much I can say about that, to be honest with you. You know, in f the... Oh. Wages are trying to stay in line with inflation, but what we charge as a barber and what we charge as a cutting hair and stuff like that, yeah, it is ridiculous. We should be charging more. I don't think the economy, I don't think the clients, I don't think our industry as a whole would be able to sustain higher prices, but yet we have to pay more of our staff, we pay more to our staff. So it's getting increasingly harder to run and run a shop. All I can say is, I personally wouldn't I personally wouldn't employ anybody in this day and age. Everyone's on a um a rent a chair in here. I do know if they are younger, you probably have to employ them to get them up and going. But look, there's not really much I can say. We cover it on this channel all the time about like, you know, keeping you updated with wages and stuff like that. I think now the off the top of my head the national living wage for over twenty three is eleven pound forty four. I remember when you know, years ago, it was under 10. So it's great that people are getting paid that because, you know, the national living wage is something that people need to be paid to live on, you know. But at the same time, it just makes it harder to run a business. So great in one sense and not so great in another. That's all I can really say. What size scissors do you use? So I've got a range of scissors I have. I've got uh, that all my scissors are QS, uh, quartered steels. I'll never use anything else. I think they're amazing. It took me 10 years to find quartered steels. And as soon as I found them, I knew they were the company for me. They're absolutely amazing. Go and check out my barbering toolkit and it gives you a, a, a more of an insight into actually which scissors I use from quartered steels. But I use a 5.5, five, a 5. Any All of mine are between five and six but i don't use anything any longer than that i do do a bit of scissor over comb but i still don't get on with them my longest pair of scissors is a six and i use a scissor over comb for that and the reason you should use a longer scissor for scissor over comb is because of the tension it creates so when you're doing scissor over comb um, all of that tension with the the scissors the blades going back and forth it creates heat and what that does is when the heat when the when it creates heat the blades expand slightly so you're doing scissor over comb and as it warms up all the all the tension you know and the friction sorry going through the scissors it warms the blades up and slightly opens the gap so you don't get a cleaner cut but the longer the scissor for scissor over comb the more the the heat has to disperse along the blade so it takes longer for the blade to heat up which gives you more time before the blades start warming up and moving so it gives you a cleaner cut for a longer period whereas if you use a shorter scissor they warm up a lot quicker and that's just a bit of a technical uh in into the scissors but all of mine are between five and six really so are you at barber connect yes i've already said this i'm going to barber connect if you see me come and say hello hopefully i'll be with there with the team i'll be with my guys from men's grooming company also and hopefully I'll get a chance to speak to a few people, talk to them about Hotheads Media. If you want to come and talk to me about Hotheads Media, great. Or anything we do in the shop and everything like that, come and say hello. So do you do any guest spots at your barbers? Yeah, hit me up. If you want to come and have a, have a look at the shop, you want to come and do a day's work, sound, not a problem. Always into doing new events having people in the shop, going and working in people's shops, everything like that. But if you're interested, drop me a message on my socials, uh, Men's Grooming Company, Connor Evans Hair, anything like that. And yeah, let's see if we can arrange something. What's life like outside of work? So life, work is life at the moment. I know that's not the best thing um, to have that work-life balance. But at the moment, we're really trying to push with the business. So I don't have much of a social life. People in my close circle sometimes get a bit sick of me because they don't always see me. But I hit the gym a lot if I'm not outside, if I'm not working. 
I uh, train a little bit of Muay Thai and I have done for 10 years plus. I like I say I'm hitting the gym like lifting weights and stuff at the moment trying to put on a little bit of size because I felt like you know I've not really looked after myself for the past few years I've just been like kind of going through the motions and pushing through business so really trying to feel and look good um, that helps my mental health helps my stress levels hitting the gym for me and lifting weights um, really helps my stress levels my anxiety and stuff like that like like, like I say, I've been doing Muay Thai for so long now that that just is very um, same to me. You know, it, it I love it and I wouldn't want to be without it because I know it definitely does something to my physical health if I don't do it. But really lifting them weights and, you know, pushing through gives me a lot of stress relief. Um, so that's really good for me. I, yeah, I enjoy chilling at the weekends if I can, going for walks and stuff like that. But a lot of my time at the minute is spent trying to push with men's grooming company, push with the coffee shop we've got in here, um, push with Hotheads Media. This is like a full-time job. I don't think I really understood when I took this on how much of a, how much of a, a workload this was going to be, but I really enjoy it. I know the content I give is going to be great for you guys. And that's all I want to do. It gives me an outlet to give good content and, help you guys uh, move through your barbering journey and stuff like that. So yeah, look, a few different things. I try to stay active, have as much of a social life as I can, but work is all consuming at the moment. So in the next few years, I'm going to settle down and do a few things for me. But yeah, at the moment, I'm just sort of chilling where I can, hitting the gym where I can and working as many hours as I can really. So yeah, so that's it for the Q&A today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this um, weekly update and your industry update. There's been a lot uh, to take in today, especially about all the stress stuff and the Stress Awareness Month. Go and check out our tips on Hotheads Media. Give us a like, share and subscribe on the YouTube if you can. It all really means a lot. We've now got 120 four subscribers and for doing this just under three months i think that's amazing i'm really grateful for all you guys that have subscribed or are following the the instagram and the twitter and the uh what and the tiktok and stuff like that so yeah i'm thankful to all you guys the hotheads community here is amazing and hopefully we can grow over this year and just keep pushing with great content so Anyway, I'll stop rambling on and I'll see you guys next week. I hope you all have a blessed week and yeah, see you then. Thanks.